everyone. My name is uh, Lama Saba. I'm from Intel, and today I'm going to talk about swinging model scheduler together with register allocation. So phase ordering of uh, instruction scheduling and register allocation is a well-known problem in compilers. Uh, the scheduler affects the RA decisions, and the RA creates spills or splits that need to be scheduled. Um, LLVM's modular solution for this is to have three phases, pre-RA scheduling, and then RA, and then post-RA scheduling. Now, our DSP target is a VLIW target with loops and no spill stack. And uh, we would like to use LLVM's uh, machine pipeliner, which is a pre-RA scheduler. Um, so the machine pipeliner is a loop scheduler that tries to, uh, increase, uh, to increase the instruction level uh, parallelism by uh, overlapping uh, loop iterations. And uh, it creates a new loop, loop kernel with uh, minimal possible uh, VLIW instructions in it. This is called the initiation interval, the II. Now, if the scheduling with the minimal II was too aggressive, it could uh, later cause uh, spills in the stack in the register allocator due to high register pressure. Uh, whereas if we were to increase the II, we could uh, avoid these spills, of course, on the expense of uh, decreased uh, throughput. So since, as I said, we want to avoid spills in our targets, if we do uh, encounter spills in the register allocator, we would like to want to go back to the machine pipeliner and try to schedule with an increased II. Um, so why not try to do like uh, scheduling and uh, register allocation together, for example, like the unison approach? Well, we would like to uh, reuse the existing passes and keep the modularity that exists. Uh, this is also faster for us in compile time, and the machine pipeliner inherently supports increasing the AI and retrying. Uh, what I mean by this last point is that if we look at the algorithm of the machine pipeliner, which implements swing modulus scheduler, uh, we see that it already does a similar thing. It calculates the minimal initiation II, analyzes the data dependence graph, orders the nodes by priority, and then schedules the node in order. And if it fails to, uh, to do so, it increases the II by one and tries again, which is basically what we want to do too. Uh, and once it's successful, it generates prologues, epilogues, and the new kernel. So we're, uh, we're basically adding a new uh, step here to try register allocation. And if we fail to do so, we increase the II and go back to number four and try again. Uh, we could actually go to number three and try different uh, ordering uh, in, if, you want to, uh, if we don't want to increase the, the uh, uh, II and uh, decrease the throughput. Um, OK, so how do we actually go back and retry? Well, LVM doesn't really support and doing things you, you did in previous passes. Uh, we could have like a new pass after the RA that will uh, try to um, uh, redo, like, undo the changes by recreating the older states before the pipeliner, but it's difficult to do because we had a lot of changes. Um, so what we are we're doing instead is we keep a snapshot of the original code uh, that we want to go back to. Um, so what we do is, um, well, in our uh, uh, pass manager flow, we replace the uh, pipeliner and the RA passes with the new super pass. And uh, in this super pass, we have a new function pass manager, and we clone the original machine function we had into a new uh, a machine function. And, um, so in, and uh, now we can run the new function pass manager on it. And uh, we run the machine pipeline and the register allocation. And we also run a new pass called RA result analyzer, which analyzes the RA for spill splits, et cetera. And it updates a new uh, immutable pass called SCADRA info with its findings. Uh, we also make sure that the machine pipeliner uh, updates the loops uh, initiation intervals it calculated into the scheduler A. So once the run is over and we're back in our super pass, we check if we were successful, if we don't have spills. And if so, we clone the machine function after it's been pipelined and register allocated into the original machine function and we continue <laughs> in our flow. Um, what happens on failure? Well, on failure, we make sure that the RA result analyzer also increases the failed loops uh, II. And so once we're back, we reclone the original machine function and we try to rerun. And this time, the machine pipeliner will try to use the uh, II it got from the RA, SCAD RA and, uh, info after it's been uh, increased. We keep on doing this until we're successful or until we reach a certain threshold. Um, so this is, of course, a trade off with throughput and compile time, but it can also be uh, useful for uh, targets with spill stack to actually uh, increase the throughput. Because uh, if, this, if the register allocated uh, created, created a lot of spills and it, it could uh, further increase the final II, whereas if we were to uh, increase the II ourselves to decrease the spills, we would 
uh, create the final code with the smaller II. And a similar approach can actually be taken for other, like, uh, register, uh, other uh, schedulers or uh, optimization problems. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.